Today, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite press releases to use. So the first press release that we're going to be going over is something called a wide step, but this wide step is going to be set up by something called a kick step. So a kick step is something that a wide receiver uses with his back foot to help him, I guess you could say, like throw his hips more, take a bigger step to really threaten this DB's leverage and to be able to sell the release, but it also helps his speed. And we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to play this full speed. So this wide step release is pretty much exactly how it sounds it's with the foot that is like, I guess, back in your stance. Now, some wide receivers like to do this from like a stance switch position, but you see how Baker here, he lines up with obviously his right foot up. So the foot that is going to be doing our kick step is his left foot. So his left foot is going to kick aggressively behind his front foot. Now, guys, this is not a big over-exaggerated step. It is probably the quickest step that you could possibly do. And you are shooting that back foot into the grass. Now, why is this important on like a wide step release? You might ask me, well, why wouldn't we just come from this stance, take this back foot, jab to the outside, and then go? Because against more talented DBs, you guys like so let's talk about the route that he's running first he's running obviously like a 10 yard dig and he's lined up out of the slot. He has a DB who's lined up outside shade and press coverage, right? So obviously what I don't want to do is just try to take off and go run the dig because he's going to get hands on me. And when he gets hands, he's going to force me to his safety help to the inside. I have to do something to move him off his platform, aka attack his leverage. He's lined up outside shade for a reason. He does not want me to go to the outside. So let's make him think we're going there. So in order to do that, you guys, I actually got to be able to step far. My goal should be to step outside of his frame, but to still keep my feet inside of my shoulders. So when you guys take this little kick step with your back foot, that loads up your hips. And I get it. I understand. Coaches will say that this is a false step. Coaches will say, don't do this. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Just try it for yourself. I'm telling you right now, when you kick behind and it's quick, it's violent, and you load up your hips like this, it makes it very, very easy for you to step this far because your hips almost spring into the movement. But because you loaded up your hips and it allows you to throw the hip with the movement, that foot is still underneath your frame. You're able to step one wide and threaten his leverage, which moves him. So that gives you a free inside release and you could get skinny or stack over the top of the DB, which means get him trailing behind you. But this step has to threaten his leverage to the outside. Now that kick step, again, guys, when we're in a receiver stance, that is a position of no momentum. We want to be able to try to get as much quickness, explosion, and momentum as fast as possible off the line of scrimmage. And that kick step is a way to do it without wasting a ton of time. So guys, this kick step, wide step with the foot that is back in your stance is one of the best releases you could use to attack Hack a DB who's outside shade press. Make him think we're going outside so we could get that free inside release. So now, this next release here that we're going to be talking about is also built off of a kick step, and this is called a Hezzy Skip Release. And this release is probably my favorite release to use because I feel you could use it in any situation and you can build off of it. But before we get into this release, you guys, if you are a wide receiver and you would like to train with us this off season, we are going to be traveling out to 15 different cities across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. Guys, we are going to be coming out to San Francisco, Orlando, Phoenix, Charlotte, Austin, Chicago, Seattle, Las Vegas, Newark, Birmingham, Houston, Boston, Columbus, Boise, and Los Angeles, California, you guys. So fellas, if you want some more information, how you could sign up to train with myself and my staff of coaches, check out that very first link in the description below. Again, guys, very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to any one of these camps. All of these camps will sell out very, very quick, you guys. Starting on September 1st, that's when we release the schedule to everybody, not just our YouTube channel. So the spots will go. The spots will go probably within the first three months. So guys, make sure you take advantage of this very first link in that description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our camps. Let's get back to this video. So now this release that we're talking about, this hesitation skip. So what you're going to doing is your back foot does that same type of kick step because again, it's for quickness, it's for speed, and it's to load up your hips. And it helps you gain some ground on your release. And then what you're doing is you are going to take a hop with your inside foot. So you kick with your right foot, hop with your left foot, and then go. So it's like a kick skip and then go. So let's talk about it. So he kicks behind, skips, and then takes off and goes to the outside. Now, why do I love this release? Why is this a great release? Why is this probably my favorite release to use? Because I feel it makes the DB make a decision. And so DBs are taught, you guys, like how many times have you seen the different clips on social media where a wide receiver will do this type of little like skip move to the outside and then he throws like a little crossover move, DB jumps and then he cuts back under the inside on like a slant. They call it like a slide release or a hezzy release. So you guys like Devontae Adams do it a lot, Keenan Allen, Justin Jefferson, etc. right? So when DBs see that little skip to the outside and that change in tempo, they are taught to hold their leverage to the inside. Expect that the wide receiver is going to cut back to the inside. Now, 
Uh, we could use that to our advantage as a wide receiver. If he's going to think that I'm going back to the inside, I could do that same type of skip, and then I could push up vertical and get off the ball. That's a way for me to hold his leverage without having to actually attack his leverage. Now, something this wide receiver maybe could have done a little bit better here is attack more vertical on it. Because, guys, I'm telling you, if you do this little skip and you go flat, you go towards the sideline, and that DB sits inside shade, if you had to run a vertical route, what this DB could do is he could cut off our angle and squeeze us to that sideline. So when we do that skip, you guys, we were trying to make the DB make a decision. We got to do that skip, and it's got to be, it can't be lateral. It can't be away from him. It has to be vertical, because that's what makes him choose. Because let's say, for example, guys, you had to run a post route, and you have inside shade press, right? So if you have inside shade press, and you do that little skip to the outside, and the DB sits, you could take the outside release, work to stack him, and then go right now or if he's running with you you could take your inside hand and put it on the back of his shoulder and cut underneath him now let's say for example you do that skip but because you go on a 45 degree angle that db very easily could be like oh crap i don't want to get beat over the top again so let's say he jumps and he like jumps to the outside as you're doing that skip you know what you could do you could put the brakes on with that foot and then slip back underneath and take the inside release. So that skip allows you to get a read on the DB. How is he playing you? Is he going to sit inside or is he going to jump? And then you take what he gives you ultimately. So in this case, that DB sat. Like I said, he could have gone more vertical, but we're able to push up to the outside, push vertical, sell vertical. He does a little peek back move to get that DB glancing in the backfield, and then he puts the brakes on and runs that comeback route. So guys, that kick step into that hezzy skip is a great release that you guys can use. Now, there are other ways that you could build off of it as well, you guys. And we're going to talk about a release here in a second that, that kind of can build off of this like hezzy skip. But I'm going to play it full speed one more time, and then we're going to get into the next release that we like. So that's a great release, guys. Still built off of that kick step, just like the very first kick step wide step. All right, so now this is going to be an example of Marvin Harrison Jr. And he is running a five-yard in. Some of you guys could also think of this like a three-step slant if you don't have a five-yard in in your playbook or a five-yard under route is they say, but he's running this versus inside shade press. So remember, I just gave that example of like running a post route versus inside shade press. So we have inside shade press. What would we do? We'd attack his leverage to the inside, or we could do that little skip to the outside, but we would take the outside release. Remember, a DB's leverage pre-snap, wherever he is shaded, is he shaded inside or is he shaded outside? That is showing what he's trying to take away. So in this specific case, he does not want us to run to the inside. He wants us to run to the outside because his help is the sideline. So if we give him a move off the ball inside, he's going to hold his leverage. And that gives me a free release. So if I had to run a post route, I'd give him that move, take the outside release. My goal would be to stack him and then break. And I could have all the spacing in the world, give my quarterback an easy window to throw it. If we force that inside release, he's going to get hands and my post is going to end up way the hell on the other side of the field, most likely. And that's not good spacing. That's not a realistic route. So you got to take what the DB gives you. Now, if you have to run a slant route, that's not exactly enough space or time to be able to stack the DB. So what you would want to do is you want to attack his outside shoulder and his outside hip for three hard steps or two five yards depending on the route and our goal is to get him to flip open and think we're running a fade then we put the brakes on and slip under him so i can maintain spacing but also so i could get open and they call that a diamond release but marvin harrison adds a little something extra to this diamond release and that's what i want to talk about so he does a little crossover move pushes up to the outside then is able to slip under and still very good coverage guys but again a completion a completion is a completion especially in the red zone we need five yards that's all we really need right now let's talk about it why does he do this little crossover move off the ball why do you guys think and the reason why he does that is because of where they're at on the field if we're like if we're in the middle of the field let's say we're on the opposite 40 right and we have 60 yards to get to the end zone this db is probably threatened by a deep fade so he's going to be threatened a little bit by speed in the red zone, DB's not exactly threatened by that. But we still, the way that you run the route is the exact same. We can't say, oh, screw it. I'm just going to try to go in front of him and run the slant. We still got to attack his outside shoulder and outside hip. But what sells vertical more is like pairing your releases together. So how would you run a fade route versus inside shade press? You'd probably give him a move just like this. You'd give him this one, two, get him to hold his leverage, then go run that fade. And maybe we've done it before. Maybe we've done it on this DB before. So he's expecting that. This is the definition of pairing your releases together. So now Harrison does the exact same thing, makes it look the exact same until five yards. He puts the brakes on and that DB's automatic. He's thinking, oh crap, I don't want to get beat on this fade again, especially with Harrison's size, especially because they're in the red zone, especially because he's an outside receiver. If you guys can make it look how, like how you'd run your fade, that's what can get a separation. So a diamond release, but with something extra off the ball, you guys. Now, remember how I said that like kick step release? We, you remember this last kick step release, right? Let's say we had this inside shade press look and I had to run a slant and we do that little kick. 
skip, and then let's say this receiver went one, two, three, and put the brakes on right here and slipped back underneath and ran a slant. That's something you could do, guys. Again, pairing your releases together. There are a million different releases. These, again, are just my favorite releases to work. But there are a million different releases that you guys can use and pair together. It's all about what you're comfortable with and what, again, you can make this, you keep this DB on his toes. You can make it unpredictable.